Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. Now this week we are back with the Mac, the uh, early 2015 MacBook Pro, 13 inch. Now you may remember in this computer's um, last video on this channel, I installed um, a two terabyte NVMe SSD in an NVMe to blade adapter and um, you know, I've been running that now for about a week and it has been going quite nicely actually so um, you know I've used it um, I've used it up at Tina's to uh, edit her first video on um, so yeah that actually worked quite well and you know I've got lots of uh, space and well just i mean we've, i've installed quite a few things on here so let's excuse me let's have a look at um what space we have okay so we have 1.86 terabytes available so that's uh, that's quite a nice amount so um so yeah that's uh hang on no no is that, is that right? No, that, that sounds more like uh, how much we've got in total. No, let's... Yeah, no, no 1.86 terabytes. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. So the machine is working just fine. However, I do need some programs that I can't actually currently run on this machine. And the reason for that is that there is no mac os version available and i would also like to play some games and in the more recent versions of mac os older games just don't work they're not allowed to work anymore because um yeah apple has completely dropped support for 32-bit applications and a lot of these games haven't been updated or put into wrappers and why should they be when apple uses metal so the way that we can get these things to work. Well, there's a few things we can do. We could go about uh, installing VMware, Parallels Desktop, or even VirtualBox, and running Windows, or even an earlier version of macOS in that. Or we can dual boot. And that's the method I'm gonna go today. Now, the reason that we're gonna go dual booting rather than uh, emulation is because the, um, by dual booting, you give Windows access to the computer's entire hardware, the entire 8 gigs of RAM, the entire uh, 1.5 gigs worth of um, Intel Iris Pro graphics, the entire power of it, the entire power of the processor that's in here. Just everything is, um, you get it, there's no overheads from a host operating system. You just get your operating system, you get Windows on bare metal, and it will run as well as it will ever run on a machine of this spec. But if you are looking to virtualize, the um, the pros of virtualization is that um, you can easily get into Windows from Mac OS, still have that there, so you can run Windows and Mac programs at the same time. And virtualization can take up less space, uh, less space Virtualization can take up less space if you are using a dynamically sized hard disk image, as in the image only grows as it needs to, rather than you're making an image of so many gigabytes and those gigabytes are not accessible. So, yeah, that's um, a couple of ways you could go around about installing Windows or even Linux onto your MacBook Pro if you wanted to do that. So, we're gonna dual boot, and to do this, we're gonna use something called Boot Camp. Now, Boot Camp has uh, been with us since um, the uh, early days of um, Mac OS on Intel. So, um, you know, from Mac OS 10.4.x for um, Intel processors, you know, you had a beta of Boot Camp and then obviously, you know, that uh, that RCM'd with uh, Mac OS 10.5. And it's, it's basically been with us ever since. Um, 
but it does look as if its days are now numbered because obviously we now have the M1 powered machines which are you know it's Apple's own silicon it's risk it's based on ARM technology and um, yeah um, even though there are versions of Windows for ARM CPUs I don't think um, I don't think there's plans to officially support Windows on um, ARM powered Macs just yet. Um, maybe the will be, maybe the won't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm all wrong, and maybe you're all going to tell me down in the comments how much of an eject I really am. Anyway, let's get started with this. I do have a Windows 10 USB key somewhere. I think uh, this one. So what we need to do is we need to go into Boot Camp, which is in the Utilities folder within Applications. Um, and boot, then we can go to Boot Camp Assistant. Introduction, Boot Camp Assistant helps install Microsoft Windows on an Intel-based Mac by downloading the necessary support software, creating a partition on your disk for Windows, and then starting the new Windows installer, please click on Open Boot Camp Help button on the instructions to finish installing Windows and the support software you downloaded. Important backup your hard disk before partitioning it or installing Windows. If you have a portable computer, please make sure the power adapter is connected. Check. Okay. So, there we go. Um, now, we can set the Boot Camp partition size. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it I'm gonna make it 250 gigs. So, I think that should be enough. And then that would give me 1.6 terabytes. Right, now, this seems to be quite interesting because what this is doing is it will not let me install from a Windows 10, um, USB key, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to go and make a Windows 10 ISO file or try and download one. Okay, so set rep. Um, I've actually had to now go to Microsoft.com. Apparently, I can't just go creating an image from this USB key. Maybe I've done it wrong, but I thought I would go and see how to go about getting an image um, on my Mac because there may be people who don't have a Windows 10 machine with which I could then download the Media Creation Toolkit. No, you can actually get the Microsoft ISO file on its own, which is, it is quite um, good. So a couple of notes about boot camping. Um, first of all, when I've boot camped in the past, I've actually found that um, that Windows will tend to use more battery life than Mac OS will, probably because a lot of the options will be set to the highest they can be um, in Windows and the power management and what have you. Um, but apart from that, it has, for the most part, worked quite well. In fact, when... Well, in fact, in... I can't even mind if it was 2007 or 2008. I think it was actually 2007. Um, there was a computer magazine. Again, I don't remember which one. But they actually said that the best Windows Vista machine that you could buy um, at the end of 2007 when this had been written was in fact the um, the white MacBook, the, the original 13-inch white MacBooks that, um, you know, you started to get with the Intel processors <laughs> And I thought that was quite amusing because that's the sort of, uh, that's a machine I had. I did have a white MacBook back in, uh, well, early 2008 and it was, uh, it was really good. It was, um, it worked uh, really quite nicely. And um, I did actually have Windows XP boot camped on that machine actually as well. So that, I used to use that for playing the like of The Sims 2. And um, I honestly think my eyesight was better back then because, yeah, yeah, I could play it. <laughs> I tried playing Sims 4 on here. It would run it, but I'm not sure my it would be compatible with my eyesight. 
Anyway, again, I'm going to let this go and download, and I think it's time for a cup of tea. So, it's a wee bit later, and we now have the Windows 10 20H2 build. So, we have the ISO file. So, let's see if we can uh, boot back into Boot Camp Assistant. USB uh, key has been taken away. Once again, I'm going to see about... Um, Can't make it exactly 250 gigs, it's either 200 and... Ah! Uh, 249, that's fine. Right, and then what I can do... Oh, yep, it's found it. Windows 10 20H2 V2 English X64. And, yep, we're going to go and install it. So, the Mac is currently... Well, Boot Camp is currently... Um, Verifying the um, ISO and is a way to download the Windows support software, which um, I think basically means drivers. So this is going to be the first time I've uh, boot camped on a um, modern Mac. And if anyone's wondering about my desktop background, well, it's actually one of uh, Tina's paintings. Um, she had hoped to get it on the... Um, end title card of her uh, last video but unfortunately that was not to be so yep I will leave the link to Tina's channel in the description for this video as well because unfortunately um, we're not able to get a cogent name just yet because uh, I think uh, she needs to have a certain number of subscribers thanks YouTube but uh, but yeah this is one of Tina's many uh, paintings so, uh, yeah, this is my desktop background on the Mac. So it's not giving me any kind of explanation as to how big of a file the support software is to download. Um, but it does seem to be taking quite a long time to download it. I'm not too keen on that. Is it just going to suddenly jump and then there we go? I don't know. But I guess I'm just going to have to leave it and come back to you again. Oh, would you look at that? The minute I turned off the camera, it uh, started moving. So... <laughs> so, this is now copying Windows files. And saving the Windows support software. So, um, yeah, this is um, looking like it's... Uh, well, it's downloaded the support software. And... Um, just basically install well i don't know if it's fully installed windows or if it's a way to um continue into windows setup itself or what it's going to do but apparently this is a boot camp windows support version uh support software version 6136 all right so this has done what it's going to do and it's um, it's now a way to restart Oh, there we go. That is odd seeing a Windows 10 uh, boot screen. Oh, setup is starting. And I have to wonder what is Windows going to look like at 256, uh, 2560 by uh, 1440, is it? Oh, <laughs> small enough. Oh, my mechty, mate. How am I? How, how the hell am I supposed to be able to see that? Just look at that. I mean, that's just daftness. How anyone is supposed to see that? I, I do not know. You know, that that is absolutely ridiculous. You know, just it really is. So, yeah, it does actually look like. It's literally just saving enough Windows files to allow it to boot. If, uh, like me, you're visually impaired, you want it to install Windows, maybe connect your computer up to a monitor for this bit. Goodness knows what all settings it's kind of done. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
I have never seen Windows 10 screen be like that. That's just daftness. I'm just going to let that continue. So we finished the first part of Windows setup and um, yeah, that was um, quite a struggle because um, yeah, the screen was way too small. So let's see uh, what it does. Hopefully it's scaled it. It's probably going to need to scale up to like a thousand percent for me anyway. Now, I have said it before and I'll say it again, but I genuinely need a larger laptop screen. I genuinely need a larger laptop again. I, I, I really, I really do. Something, um, you know, I do. And I was hoping that this year I might be able to put something aside and, you know, maybe buy something modern, but I don't think that's going to happen. Well, I say modern, I mean quasi-modern. Something with a... At least a Ryzen and maybe a 1050 or something in it, but I mean, that's just going to be too much of a big ask, I think. So, this is Windows just getting ready now and it's messing about with the. Uh... Yeah, just. Just messing about. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. It's a shame it doesn't show the Apple logo when it's booting Windows. But I'm <laughs> sure Apple wouldn't allow that. Oh, yeah, here we go. And again, we're back up to tiny, minuscule, bloody need an electron microscope to see it. Yes, I'm aware that's not how electron microscopes work, but bloody hell, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean... <laughs> Yes, higher resolutions makes it cr crispier and clearer, but I mean, it just with the higher resolutions, the text gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's there's no bloody need for that. Seriously, there is no need. All right, can I use a magnifier? I kind of can, but the drivers aren't installed yet, so it's going to bloody struggle. Is this the right keyboard layout? US? Yes, it is. Skip. <clears throat> now we have some important setting up to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Another reboot! Now let's see what's new from Windows. Just a moment. I would like to set my computer up for, I said personal use. So again, I'm going to have to use, I mean, the magnifier does kind of work at the moment, but because there's no display drivers, it's very choppy. So same as I always do with Windows. No online speech recognition. Um, 
no tailored things, no diagnostics data, no inking and typing. Oh, wait a minute. No, I do like to let it access my location. Get tailored experiences. Nope. Uh, why not? Yep. And I will put the product key in bit later. And I'll see how well this worked, because if it doesn't work too well, then, you know, it is very easy to then remove the Windows partition. Basically, you can go into boot camp and I believe you can do the reverse of what we just did. Ah, there we go. So it's actually made things bigger. So it's scaled it up the way. Almost there. And there you go. So now we just need to install the uh, boot camp stuff. Right, so now we're going to reboot. And even though this has resized the uh, screen element somewhat, it is still very small for me, so I'm still gonna need to make use of the magnifier. Now it has gone back to making everything tiny, but the drivers are now installed. So um, magnification, I can uh, I can actually do this. So, what I am going to do first of all is see if I know I need to activate Windows. So, a lot of the settings I I cannot access at the moment, but I want to see if it will. No, it bloody won't. It won't let me. Oh no, it will. Advanced scale it. No, it will. It will. Um, so it's apparently set it to 250. Let's see if I can then set it to 350. And sign out the way. Okay, that is a bit better. Now, oh, I think I'm going to have to turn off the automatic brightness setting or something. Because it's, I mean, this is way too dark. Um... But yeah, there we go. That's Windows installed on the Mac. Let's have a look in, um, let's have a look in Device Manager, see what we've got. We've got Bluetooth, um, display adapters, Iris Graphics 6100, um, Apple keyboard and trackpad, FaceTime HD camera, Broadcom AC network adapter and Broadcom NetExtreme Gigabit Ethernet. Um, so yeah, it would seem that this thing has got a Broadcom chipset in it, which um, yeah, Broadcom usually uh, tends to work uh, pretty well, I've found. Portable devices, we've got a hang me, um, card reader, print queue, Processors, i5 5257U uh, at 2.7 gigahertz. Um, light sensor. Dynamic application loader host interface. Ooh. Universal serial bus controllers. I know it's, it doesn't actually say Thunderbolt. That's... I do find that quite interesting. Uh, Thunderbolt, the Thunderbolt parts are not specifically um, specified within Device Manager. I do find that uh, quite odd. Is there any um, 
Ah, there's only Apple software updates on here. Probably, I wonder if there's a Apple control panel. There probably is. Um, yep. So there is. There's, there are already updates for this. So um, not a bad idea to go ahead and install them. And yes, um, Apple Apps on Windows still uses the old style updater. That um, has been with us quite a while, actually, since the, for about 20 years. So, just got to let that um, reboot. And there we go. We are about booted in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look at the uh, boot camp control panel when it uh, decides to um, open itself up. There we go. Now, from here, I can, can I choose, can I turn the volume up and down? It's not using the, um, I can. And this uses Cirrus Logic Sound, so uh, CS4208. So there you go, then. Cirrus Logic is alive and well. Um, or at least in 2015 they were, anyway. Um, so, no supported external displays connected. Um, keyboard, you can adjust keyboard brightness and low light. Um, use all the keys as standard function keys. Trackpad, <coughs> we can use um, secondary click or what have you. Um, but um, you've also got things like um, Mac OS or Boot Camp for the startup disk. So what I will do is I will set the startup disk to Mac OS. We've seen Windows running on here. So now that that is set, when I go back to Windows, what this is going to, well, what, when I shut down the computer, what this will do is it will take an age to shut down. And then when it restarts, it will become a Mac again. Hooray! So, there you are. So, I mean, that is taking a while to start up, I will admit. Also, since I did my last video, um, well, I was told potentially an error that the NVMe SSDs from Western Digital are unreliable. But then the source that told me I'm not going to implement, I'm, I'm not going to implicate them. They then said it was actually the uh, the WD Black NVMe drives that um, are that drop like flies. So. Are the blue ones any good? I hope they are because I can't afford to go out buying SSDs every two minutes. Especially not two terabyte NVMe ones. They are expensive. And the prices, I mean, this this is the thing. I mean, Linus was talking about this, you know, computer components that we've all wanted to buy, you know, that people have been maybe saving up to buy and they've come to buy them and the found that um, they're actually out of reach once again because we've got issues with scalpers with the tech shortages and it's the, the whole thing is just a mess right now so we're back in mac os so if i wanted to go into windows don't need to go and uh, set the startup disk mode show you a wee trick what we can do is when you hear the startup chime Press and hold the command key. No, 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 the option key, the option key. And there you go. You'll get, um, you will get the um, option to boot Mac OS or Windows. So whichever one you go for, just select it and then click on the arrow 
and then you're, there you are. You're in the operating system that you are wanting to be in. And the fact that this has taken a while to start up, maybe it makes me think that actually it uh, probably does some kind of suspend thing. Because Windows... I mean, Mac OS... Normally it will start up, it'll be quite quick. Um, but uh, actually, no, it's, it's gone quick again. But um, yeah, I, I wonder if it suspends to disk and then just has a lot of the files ready just to go, like Windows does for a fast startup. But anyway, that is how to boot camp uh, on Mac OS Big Star. Hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have, please feel free to join me for my next one. But for now, cheerio bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. You could also subscribe to the channel and hit the wee bell icon to be notified when I have published a new video. But until then, please feel free to check out some of my previous videos.